Thank you so much for joining us, Felma. Let me introduce you to our audience. Uh, so Felma is originally from Kenya, is playing for the Troy women basketball team. And beyond uh, awesome on-field performance, she's also a started a uh, basketball team in Kenya, the Swish Basketball in her home term, Nakuru, um, to help keep kids out of trouble. And you are a Sport or College Impact Award winner. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. I would love for you to um, walk us through how you started playing basketball and how you made your way to play college. Okay, how I started playing basketball. It's actually an interesting story. Um, I never wanted to play basketball in the first place. Um, not just basketball, actually, all sports. I never wanted to be involved with anything. I'm a bit lazy. Um, <laughs> okay. But my brothers, uh, my brothers got me into this whole thing. And um, at the age of 14 is when I first started the basketball. And at the age of 16 is when I started playing active basketball. Okay. And I mean, that's pretty late for a sport to come that far. So how did you realize, hey, I'm actually really good at that and, and this this is not just fun, but I'm actually really good because you start organized when you're 16 and now you're in college. How did that go? Um, well, again, it started with my family. The support was, was and still is uh, awesome, tremendous. They kept saying, you know, you're just talented. You, you just don't see it. <laughs> Um, then it uh, transformed to people outside, uh, the people that I came across, and they kept saying the same thing, uh, you have potential. I mean, I see one of them watching, Son, Mr. Son. son. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you have potential, and uh, I still didn't want to do anything. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't want to be involved with basketball at all, but... Um, at the age of 18, I think I went and played at a certain tournament just in uh, Zone 5. And um, I don't know. I just started falling in love with the game. All right. And then, so you didn't want to play. You didn't want to play. Hey, I'm actually really good at this. And, oh, I actually like this. Um, that's a really interesting, interesting approach. And you talk about family, and actually, I've I've talked to to one of your brothers before, mm -hmm. who uh, has a really amazing basketball career as well. What's the impact of your your you talked about your brothers have turned you uh, like gotten you into this? Now, what's the impact mm -hmm. of them in pushing you to continue wanting to like, hey, I, I can. As you said, I can do something with this. I can um, play college, etc. What's their impact on it? First of all, they believed. Um, I know uh, Ariel, the one you talked to, believed, and he was always proclaiming it. And um, one thing he used to say was, uh, he did not, so I'll, in quotes, I didn't get to go play college basketball, but I see it in you. Um, that touched my heart and every time till date every time i'm in there i'm playing it's running in my head that okay this is something someone started he wanted me to be you know great <laughs> and um same thing i have a younger sibling that's upcoming and i want the same for him i want him to look up there and be like uh this this stepping stone and i have to be better each and every day all right, now I can I can see that, and obviously he's got a great career as well. But uh, college is a very different different angle. And how did you God, get recruited to Troy? How did that go? Um, you came directly from Kenya to Troy, and and how did you decide? Hey, Troy is the right fit for me. Um, point of correction: I came from Kenya to Texas. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yes, I started at a JUCO, and then after two years, I transferred to Troy. Okay. But so I was recommended by 
another person that we went to school together, high school. And after she graduated from T Tyler, um, that's, it was a JUCO TJC, she recommended me. And that's how my recruiting process started. Okay, interesting. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for the correction. It's always good to have stats right. <laughs> um, and um, you're, I guess, playing through COVID and making those changes. You've got a fifth year of eligibility now. Yeah. How is how's that making a difference for you? Um, it's making a huge uh, difference. I actually have huge expectations. You know, um, I want this year to be great. Uh, everything I'm doing, I'm doing hard and smart. I just want it to be a great year. And um, also, of course, I believe in Troy with an advanced degree. So, yeah, it's a big okay. thing. Yes. Great. Um, what are you studying for all of our, our audience? What are you, what's your degree in? Uh, so I graduated with an undergrad in uh, psychology, a Bachelor of Science in Psychology. And now I am working on, uh, or my major is clinical mental health. Oh, wow. Very, and, yeah. very, very interesting as in. I think you, it's certainly, we need a lot of that. And unfortunately, after COVID, we need a lot of that, not more of that. Um, so as a basketball player, as a high profile athlete, it's great to have that, not just that, and obviously congratulations on the bachelor, but also that advanced yeah. degree then. Um, so NBA draft, W not NBA, but WNBA draft, is that on the, on the horizon for you? Um, I don't know. Let's okay. just wait and see. <laughs> yeah, okay, looking for a hopefully a good year. Yes. yes. Okay, good. Well, hope finger, fingers crossed for a, for a really good year at the, mm -hmm. um, but obviously that advanced degree is going to be uh, super helpful. And yeah. uh, that's the beauty of the NCA system. We all go pro, some in sports, some outside of sport. Um, but it's great to, to see how the sport was able to um, support that educational aspect. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. when, you, when you are playing, um, and you, obviously you're abroad, right? Um, right now, and international student athletes, they always have a little bit, there's, there's always some additional rules, additional regulations, name, image, and likeness. Now everyone can make money, well, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it's it's one of those aspects. Like, well, does it, how is that fair? How do you go about some of those aspects? And 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 how did what what's your perception as an international student athlete? How how are you experiencing college basketball different than your um, colleagues from the US? Um, one thing is, it's always up here that I'm international. So everything I do, I have to abide by the rules. It don't matter what it is. I just need to abide by the rules and focus on the things that I can control on my end. So I really don't, uh, I really don't pay much attention to things that I can change. So, yeah. Okay, that, that, makes, that makes sense. And, and I know that part of the... Um, college impact awards we've been we've been looking as like oh how can we provide a sponsorship how can what can we do when we settled on making a donation to the to the the team as in how can so you're really passionate about like giving back to the community being involved with it and and it's part of the part of your family and i talked to ariel before like you as a group really started that women's basketball program in Kenya. Can you tell us more about that? We just want kids to play basketball, uh, find something to do, stay out of trouble, and enjoy, have fun. Yeah. And so you just went ahead and be like, yep, you know what, well, here's a women's basketball team, and here's how, have you played in that team as well, Swish? No. Um... You know, it's interesting. I've always wanted to start a women's basketball team, but this time, <laughs> I think my brother was in the country and uh, with some of my sisters. They also play basketball. 
Okay. And I don't know, they, he probably just woke up one day and he's like, I want my sisters to have a team to play for. I want them to play basketball. So, just went idea, for it. Brainstorm. Let's get it. Uh, that's fantastic. Now, do you play with your, you, when you're, when the siblings come together, do you all play basketball? Oh, yes. And it used to be intense, really intense and competitive. So, yeah, that's, that's a, it's a plus because it's, uh, it was, I don't know. It was just, it's, it's in the blood. It was very competitive. Um, we could fight and argue and call each other names sometimes. But yeah, that's why we, that's why we're here today. So uh, you sometimes let Ariel win when, when you guys playing or? Well, not that easy. It, it was never easy for him. Um, yeah. No offense, but it's true. <laughs> So with fierce with fierce sisters like that, um, there it's I I can I can I can't even imagine mm -hmm. um, that that type of competition. That's great. Now, when let's say we're 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 talking about we're talking about obviously you're not a, you can't right now can't monetize through to sponsorship at least mm -hmm. in the US. But let's assume. There is the potential you go on to play WNBA down the road. Like, who, who would be some of the the top level brands that you would want? You know, like that could be a really good sponsor for me. That because I I align what I can see myself working with them. Is there anyone that you would say, yep, yeah, I'd I'd yeah. work with them? Yes, I'd say Powerade. I mean, uh, Red Bull because they're worldwide. Um, of course, Nike, uh, Adidas, the worldwide. Um, yeah. Okay. Now, so you're looking for a, a global partner, so to speak. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now I I can see that as in being an international and wanting to probably having that international reach is yeah. is quite quite beneficial. Now, one aspect that we, as um, at Sporta, we're always looking for is what's the contribution in the community. And obviously, you've you've made a big contribution in regards to uh, what well, you're fostering women, well, you're promoting women's sport, you build your team. And um, what motivates you to to give back? And do you see yourself as a did you have role models when you grew up that played basketball? Who did you follow? And do you see yourself as a role model in that sense? Um, yes, I see myself as a role model. And um, I know that everything I'm doing, there are people watching. So I don't want to mislead people. Most things I do, I try to leave uh, good strides. And um, <laughs> my brother was my role model. Honestly, yeah, but uh, my family, my mom, my dad, all in different aspects. They were all athletes, so mm -hmm. yeah. It's great when you have a role model right in the family, someone who, because everyone's like, oh, and I'm following this professional athlete. And I was like, actually, my brother is the professional athlete. So that's, yeah. It's definitely um, an advantage. Now, is there one thing that he did that you took from him that you're like, yeah, this is the this is one of those aspects that I'm that I'm following that that helped me guide and help me be successful. Yeah, resilient. Um, he was. <laughs> Well, you know, um, I don't know if it's parents all over the world, but our parents were those people that, um, I don't know, it's like they didn't want us to play basketball that much or they didn't believe mm. in going uh, anywhere with that. So he was very resilient. Like, he hang in there, he kept going, which was disrespectful. <laughs> but he kept going, uh, he kept going on these trips and... Uh, one day breakthrough. So looking back at that, 
Um, I know I face some challenges too here and there, no training ground because, well, the parents are worried. I'm a female and the world is just the world. Crazy things can happen. But I decided to be tough and hard and I was like, okay, I know what I want and if he made it, I am going to do it too. Okay. Oh, interesting. I mean, that that's that resilience, it seems like it's boiling it down. And obviously, it seems like it's gotten you very far. Uh, yeah. So sh shout out to Ariel here. Um, now, we have this segment at Sporter where we're looking for pro advice. Where generally our, our audience sends us some questions that we then pass on to you. Mm -hmm. Now, for you, we actually have a perfect fit because of your psychology background. And, and uh, mm -hmm. so one of our submissions reads that, um, I'm paraphrasing it now, but I'm generally struggling with overcoming when things don't go so well. How, how do you deal with that aspect? How do you overcome that? How do you deal with it? And how do you almost like psych yourself up and believe in yourself? Wow, um, <laughs> that's interesting. Um, so for me, I just try to live in the power of the moment. Uh, like I said earlier, trying to focus on what I can control. So I try to just focus on what's going on, what I'm feeling right now, what's happening right now. And then when I figure out what's happening to me right now, I'll try take strides to figuring out what's causing uh, the feeling of being overwhelmed. Okay. Do you have a specific, I don't know, some people be really believe in breathing or in some, some sort of <laughs> techniques. Do you have something that gets you to this? This is my moment and like, this is when I focus on me. Yes. Um, so like you said, breathing, normally I will just take a deep breath and then write something down like, um, I've, I've been strong enough to overcome this and that and that for the past two or three years. Why not overcome it now? You know, mm -hmm. if I was able to do it then and I'm here now, why can't I just be resilient and just hang in there and get through it? So, yeah, I'll probably just breathe and write some little sticker notes put them somewhere where I can see them and just remind myself that, oh, I got this. Yeah. Okay. So you're learning or you, you remind yourself of past aspects or past situations when you were successful in overcoming an adversity or when you, you were able, okay, that's, that's really interesting. Um, mm -hmm. It's a great, great tip that we will definitely, definitely pass along. Um, I want to be cognizant of your time, but, I also want you to, I want to give you the chance and opportunity to say, hey, generally we ask our athletes, um, what do you, what is your recommendation on to the, call it next generation? Obviously you're still very early in your, your career, still yet accomplished, uh -huh. but what's your generation for, for, the, for those athletes who are, who are young, who are up and coming, who's like, what, is your, what do you want to share with them in terms of what they, what's your number one tip or number two and three tips for them? Oh, discipline, sacrifice. Oh, yeah, I would go with those two because they go hand in hand. That's what I can think of right now. And that, those are two Im important keywords. Now, in terms of discipline, I think we, we all have somewhat of an understanding of what that yeah. means as, you know, got to get up to training, all of those different things. But sacrifice, can you elaborate on, on that? Oh, they, like I said, they go hand in hand. So um, you want to sleep in and you want to get better at the same time. So you're disciplined, yes, but you also have to sacrifice that sleep. If it's at 6 a.m. and you're like, you know, it's cold and it feels really warm and cozy in your blanket, just be like, okay, I'm going to sacrifice this today so that I can be uh, two times better tomorrow. 
you know, yeah, in that context. And sacrifice the all good food, fried food, right? eat healthy. Yeah. Okay. Very, very interesting. And, and uh, now I understand what you mean with they go hand in hand. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's disciplines and, and sacrifice. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Now, how do you... How do you motivate yourself? You talk about tomorrow I'm two times better, but is that your goal? Or how do, how do you motivate yourself for that sacrifice and for that discipline? <laughs> wow. Um, how do I motivate myself? I just want to be better. I want to be better than my brothers. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I want to be better than them. I want to have a lot of trophies and go further than what my dad accomplished. Um, and I want to make my mom proud. I want to make my family proud. Yeah. So thinking about those few things made me just wake up and go up there and do what I have to do. Awesome. No, I mean, making the family proud. I'm sure you've already made them very proud. Um, pretty much <laughs> and uh, but having the uh, sibling rivalry is definitely a, a very good motivator and it's beneficial if the other siblings are doing pretty well as well so that's definitely gonna gonna push you uh, far as well so mm -hmm. I, that's a really good motivator um, thank you so much for joining us on the sport podcast for all of our uh, audience, make sure to follow Felmas on all of the socials. Uh, check out her sporter profile. She's got some amazing experiences set up there as well. Um, connect with her there as well as on all of the socials. And we're going to link her out. Um, this podcast will also be available on wherever you get your podcast from um, fairly soon. And thank you for joining us today on the Sport Podcast. Really appreciate you joining us. Have an awesome day. And uh, yeah, we're for happy and excited to follow along on that uh, women's basketball season coming up. All right. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.